Welcome everyone. My name is Leon Garcia and I am a proud member of the Choose to Change Mentoring Program. The Choose to Change Mentoring Program is a self-supporting Christian-based group supported by the Choose to Change Foundation. There is no fee to attend this class, but we encourage donations from our members and to anyone else who believes in what we do. The only requirement for membership is a sincere desire to change your life. We are on a mission to restore families by inspiring, challenging, and equipping men to become better fathers, husbands, and leaders in our community. So if you are ready to change your life, then you are in the right place. Through this program, you will learn exactly where to start your life change journey, tools and resources to keep you going, and a support system to help you reach your goals. The Choose to Change Mentoring Program believes in three key principles of life. Number one, we believe in the life-changing power of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Two, we believe that God has already done his part and that it is our responsibility to learn to do our part. Number three, success or failure is a choice and the choice is yours. So if you are ready, say, I am ready. Um, so now I just want to say, you know, that uh, Brother Orlando here does a real, very good job of teaching us. So uh, if you would just lend an ear to him, here's our leader, our CEO and founder of this foundation. Orlando Salinas. Testing, testing. Chano, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, guys, thank you for coming. If I haven't learned anything else in my life is that... Um, Life is a challenge, <laughs> right? It's not until we grow up that we know that, right? It's all fun and games when we're growing up, but, but then life is a challenge. The choices we make between here and there. I have an interesting uh, example for you guys today, but uh, who knows what we spoke about last week? Nobody? I asked a question last week, so I want to just get right into this. I want to try to make this a short meeting. We want to have another discussion with you guys uh, as people are listening, because people, what happens is that online, if you're watching us online, thank you for watching us. Don't forget to like us and do whatever you need to do there on Facebook and YouTube. And and they, people see it afterwards. And um, so the discussions we have here bring a lot of insight to people, believe it or not. And last week, I think we had a very, really, really good discussion. And the question last week was, um, is fatherlessness really an epidemic in our society today? Is fatherlessness really an epidemic in our society today? In other words, a lack of fathers. And that's what we're concentrating on this month. I don't know if you all know this, but this month is Father's Day. Did you know that? Father's Day. Father's Day. Is, did you all know that uh, that the Father's Day, and in fact, I was reading about that, the uh, history of Father's Day. And Father's Day came into play about in 1910. Um, somebody came up with that idea. It was a lady named Spoken. Uh, no, it was in, founded in Spoken, Washington at a YMCA in 2010 by a lady named Sonora. Smart Dodd, D-O-D, Dodd, that's about right, right? Dodd, who was a, it was born in Arkansas. It, its first celebration was in Spoken U, UMCA on June 19, 2010. Her father, the Civil War veteran, William Jackson Smart, was a single parent who raised his six children there in Arkansas and it was so this um, is it the mother or the father 
Let me see. Where's her baby's body? Oh, because her father raised six children. So what two things I didn't know about Father's Day, that it was inspired by a veteran. So that was pretty cool. And that when it first started, not very, very, not very many people were interested. Because for some reason, there's something about the father that people reject. And even today, people are rejecting the father um, for many different reasons. And our society doesn't look upon the father as being as important. I'm doing a lot of research on this. And I'm finding out a lot of things. And you'll go crazy researching. But the number one element there, well, I will get to, I'll get to that in a minute. Last week, the, the question was, is fatherlessness an epidemic? And the answer to that is, yes, it is. And it grows worse and worse by the day. I looked up the word epidemic. You know what epidemic means, Chavarria? Epidemic. Let me tell you. Glad you asked. <laughs> epidemic is, has to do is it's, it's sometimes related to a disease, like we're having an epidemic uh, in this um, uh, was a was a corona, right? What's it? Oh, it's a pandemic. No, okay, that's, that's right. No, but uh, but this epidemic is some is sometimes it's related to a disease in medicine, but. I looked up some definitions. Listen, listen to the definition. An epidemic is something that's affecting or trending to affect a disproportionately, dis, disproportionately large group of individuals within a population. So something happening within a certain population, in this case, fathers. It's also characterized by very widespread growth. An epidemic is grows widespread. Um, it's like an outbreak, it says, of disease that spreads quickly and affects many individuals. Or an outbreak or product of sudden rapid rapid speed, growth, and development. And that's what has happened in our society in the last 150 years. It, it's been longer than that. But just in the last 150 years, the idea of fathers, of fathers has diminished. The father in the home keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I was, I was reading an article about, uh, I saw a documentary about uh, that, that was called do fathers really matter which is the question of today are fathers really that important just really quickly are fathers really important yes, yes? Yeah, I believe so too and that's what we're going to look at today we're going to look at the, that question are fathers really that important and that is a question that I asked uh, Zapata yesterday and I've been asking people about that because what I found out is that when we're young, I was talking to my son about this. Because I'm trying to figure things out. You know, let me, you know, I might go different ways today because I just have a lot of things on my mind. Because I'm going through things just like you're going through things. I'm having to deal with life just like you're having to deal with life. I'm having to pay bills just like you have to pay bills. I have to go to work just like you have to go to work. And sometimes... Uh, you know, I'm wondering where, am I right or wrong? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? What's, it's not easy. It's a challenge. So, why am I telling you that? I have no idea. I was talking to my son. What was I, where was I? Help me out. Lost train of track. I lost my train of thought. I was telling you that for a reason I completely forgot. Nobody? Oh. So I was, I was um, talking to my son about why father is important. But you know, what's, what I'm learning is that he doesn't understand why a father is so important. 
And we as an adult don't understand how important it is to have a father until we're adults. Think about that for a minute. And this is why we struggle with our teenagers and our youngsters. Because they don't understand. They don't know how to be appreciated. They don't know how to learn to be grateful. They don't know that they need us. Right? That's why they run away. That's why they get mad. That's why they do what they do. Because they don't know that they need us. Until what? You wind up on drugs, or in prison, or in jail, or almost dying, right? Or some, what I've learned is it takes a tragedy or something to happen. I call it a choose the change or a crossroads, a, a choose the change moment where you finally realize, man, what's the problem? What's my problem? And somehow, some way, the idea of, Where's, where was my father? Nobody taught me. Nobody showed me. Nobody directed me. And that's the dilemma that we find ourselves in men. That we neither had a father, or if you didn't. And if you did, you didn't have a good father. Or you, and so then now we're fathers, and we're having to deal with issues that we were never learned how to do. And that's the dilemma we're facing today. And the question is today, are fathers really that important? I saw a documentary called, Do Fathers Really Matter? It was about an hour long. And I've been watching and reading several things on fatherlessness. This documentary was about, it was, it was, it was, it was focused on the black community, which is, has the highest rate of fatherlessness, in case you didn't know that. It's the black community, and then the Hispanic community that has the highest rate of fatherlessness. No fathers. And this documentary was about the black community and they asked 10 people, five women and five men. They asked them these questions. Here's the questions they asked them. Do you, did you grow up with a father or not? In other words, did you have a father in your home or didn't you? Second question. How, do you, how did that affect you? Third question. Do you think not having a father, or do you think having a father, or not having a father is a problem? They asked them, do you think it's a problem not having a father? And the last question was, what is the solution to fatherlessness? Those are the questions they asked. Now, what talk, caught my attention, it was actually pretty boring. I, I, I was trying to get some real insight, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get it into, into, into the end when they started. Uh, one thing's for sure, they were affected by fatherlessness. Even the men and women that did have a father didn't mean they had a good relationship. But here's the solutions that they gave, and this is what I wanted to share a little bit on today. One of them said, we need to stop the negativity and stop making excuses. Like, I didn't have a father, so this is why I'm like this. So in other words, this one was taking ownership for not having a father. In other words, she said, this was a she. She said, I had to decide that my father did the best he could he might have not have been a good father. I don't know. But I had to decide that I had to move on. That's what she said. I said, wow, that's pretty good. Here's the other solution. If, you, if, if they had more opportunity, this one was blaming. Well, maybe if my, my black community had more opportunity. Who's ever thought that? Man, if I only had more opportunity. I thought that before. Yeah, had I had an education, had my father taught me a little bit more about life. See? Opportunity. See, but, but we don't think about that when we're 16. So, again, these are the, the solutions that they gave. Maybe they need just more opportunity, men. Okay? Another one said, some kind of support system. 
What men need is some kind of support system. I said, oh, wow, that's the one I chose. To create some kind of support system. To teach men how to res be resp responsible and reliable. To teach men how to be uh, uh, dependable. To teach men about fathering. Another woman said, we need to make better choices, not just lay down with a man. <laughs> she took responsibility. Mentoring men and mentoring women can be the first step, she said. And the other one, the last one said, we need to change our patterns. We need to change our patterns from the past and take a good look at ourselves. I like this guy. Take a look good at ourselves and start changing the patterns and creating, start changing the bad patterns we have and start creating new ones. So out of all this, I thought to myself, so what's the solution? What's the real solution? From all this research I've been doing throughout the years, in the last three months, in the last two months, I've come up with four clear facts. So I'm going to give you my clear facts about fatherlessness. And by the way, this is just an overview. So you can start thinking. Because here's the four facts that I came up with. One, fatherlessness is not the only problem in our society today. But it is definitely a major root cause of many other problems that we're facing. So I thought about that because, because I'm teaching this, because I'm trying to educate you a little bit about fatherlessness or bring awareness to it. I don't want you to feel like that's the only problem you have. I understand we have a lot of other problems, right? Who has more problems? <laughs> you know, some of us are literally going crazy. I'm serious. Why do you think so many people are in meds? Because life hits you in a way, man. And if you were not toughened when you were young, right? It's hard. Life is hard. So the clear fact is that we have more problems than just fatherlessness, but fatherlessness is definitely a root cause of many other problems. The second thought, I, the second fact that I decided, I came up with, with that being a father is a choice. A choice that you have to make. Right? In other words, it's going to take an, an initiative on my part, on our part, to be a man in our own home. To, it's going to take an initiative on our part to decide, which is why I started the Choose to Change Foundation, to choose to be the man in your house. That, that, did you choose it, Zapata? The, or did someone force you? you? You can't force somebody to be your father. You can't force somebody to be a father. You can't force somebody to love you. You can't force somebody. You have to choose it. And this is why to me, the Bible, Jesus Christ, God, makes so much sense. God says, choose. It makes a lot of sense. And it's going to be up to you to decide that you want to be a man of God. That you want to be a father. Even if you didn't have one. Because the pain is great. In fact, it's wicked, I think. It's wicked. Just the stories that I've heard of men. The things that they went through. The things that they had to go through. The things that they had to endure. The things that someone that has a father has no idea. What you had to go through. The pain. Right? See, this is real stuff. And the reason I love talking about this is because I wanted the truth. <laughs> right? 
Tell me the truth. What's real? What's not? I did the same thing with God. God, are you real? Help me understand. Help me believe. So it's a choice, and it's a choice is yours. And the third thing was that fathers do matter. The answer to the question, yes, fathers matter. And it matters to our children. It matters to our wives. It matters to our society. It matters. Anybody can just... I was, as I was coming over here, I, I remember now, my, my mind, I remember where I was going a little while ago. <laughs> Lost my train of thought a little while ago. But it came back. What I was thinking is that I'm going through all these things I'm having to deal with in my, in my own life, in my business, in my life, with my kids, with my wife, with just everything that goes around. And, I'm, and, it's, and, and I knew I had to come do this class. And it's like, oh man, I'm pulled in all kinds of directions. It's hard. And I have to choose to do right. Just like my son is going to have to choose how he responds. Just like you, son, are going to have to choose how you respond. Just like Jason has to choose. Nathan has to choose. All these kids, they're going to have to choose. And you're going to have to teach them how to, that they're going to have to choose. And it's not an easy, and it's not easy, right? Which is what I found out. There's the, the, the fourth one, the fourth fact that I found out about fatherlessness. There's no easy solution. Man, I wish it could be all happy and fun and gay. I, man, I wish, I wish. My pastor said it really well last night. Sometimes you're going to have to say no. <laughs> Teenagers don't like that. Husbands don't like that. I don't like the word no just as much as my son probably doesn't like it. I don't like it either. Do you like it when, the, when your boss tells you or, or whoever in charge? No, can't do that. Nobody likes that. There's no easy solution, guys. I believe this is why we need God. This is why I decided to plunge into faith to God, Jesus Christ, and the church. In that order. <laughs> you turn to God when you don't understand. You remember, who remembers that? Being in prison or being in a jam or, you know, have dying, whatever, wherever you're situation was you didn't know too much about God all you knew is what you how you grew up or religion whatever it was but you cried out you said God some of us said if you're there if you're real but you cried out to God and then we got introduced to Jesus Christ and now you have to decide and is this Jesus stuff really really true if you ask me I'm gonna tell you yes if you ask me, well, how do I know? I'm going to tell you, I don't know. That's why it's called faith. What are you taking a chance on? <laughs> the education system? The gangs? Your smarts? Your wisdom? That's what you're hanging everything on the balance? I'm hanging it on the faith in Jesus Christ. And the teachings that he teaches. And then I'm going to hold on to my church. I'm going to tell you a secret. You all ready? When I walked into my church 18 years ago, I thought it was kind of crazy. I really did. I didn't understand what was going on in our church. Because my thoughts and my ideas of what a church was supposed to be was twisted, just like yours was probably, because of your upbringing or because of your lengthy education. <laughs> but what I found out and how I embraced my church is because they were teaching men how to discipline their lives. 
and I didn't want to be disappointed. Think about that for a minute. And I said, wow. And the closer, the more I sought after answers, the more I sought after answers to my own problems, to my own craziness, to my own family, to my own lack, the more what the Bible and what this church was teaching me made sense. Love your wife. Love your children. Stay away from pornography. Get up early. <laughs> that was a huge one. Get up early. <laughs> For me it was. But why? Why do I have to get up early? Just get up early. <laughs> of course, I don't like 3 o'clock in the morning, but you know. <laughs> and Oswald gets up at 3, man. Said, Come on, brother. You're, you're out of control. That's amazing. Take care of his family. 3 o'clock in the morning. See, but we don't understand that when we're kids. The sacrifice that men that have made a choice. Because who knows men that have decided not to be a father? Raise your hand if you know somebody like that. Who decided they're not going to be a father. So let me close. Was an illustration. It's called a fatherless elephant. <laughs> it's good. But before I close, I want you to give a little thank you for watching us. I know some of you just jumped online. Um, I want to pass around the don donation bucket. But I want you to know that we have shirts, you know? Because a lot of people are new. No, but you can be the, you don't know? <laughs> Why are you going to the top? <laughs> You're like, Captain, remember that? You need to try on the cap too. Let me see. This is how we raise money, folks. This is how we raise money. You don't know? I guess, uh, man. <laughs> now, and then we have these right here. This one just says going to the top, just in the front. And then you have these right here. This is how we're raising money a little bit at a time. And uh, also, if you're watching online, you can go to the Choose the Change Foundation. Oh, y'all remember? You can scan that. Did you try it, Peña? Did you try that? It works. Let me see. What's that? Only if, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I like it. I just like doing it. Look at it. See? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, and it's, it's awesome. Um, we're just, I was talking to Daniel today. We're just starting to get back into the prison. And it's kind of, it's really, uh, it's hard. It's hard to get in there, get back into the rhythm. Este, and and um, but um, if you want to go into the prison with me, you let let me know. You need to let me know, and uh, because I go every Monday. So thank you for your support. Thank you for 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 giving to the Choose the Change Foundation. A lot of people are being helped, especially men in prison. You know, not very many people care about the men in prison. Right? Who knew, who knew that? There's too many problems out here, man. You got people dying out here. You got cancer. You got abuse. You got just a lot of problems in our society. So, you know, prisoners are the last thing people think of. <laughs> but this is what God called me to do. Let me just go find a few men. So, let's, let's close with the fatherless elephant <laughs> it's a pretty powerful little story guys check this out as I was going through my research I found this uh, illustration or this story so it's, it's a true story and man I better have it come on 
got to be kidding me. Oh, there it is. All of you were like, man, you better have it. So the question is, are fathers really that important? I was reading this article and I said, wow, listen to this. Check this out. You're going to like this. In South Africa Park, an enlarged species, white rhinos were, were thriving. Rhinos were thriving until an unknown killer began stalking them. Rhinos. They started finding rhinoceroses dead. This is in the wild, in the wild African park. Since the rhino's horns had not been touched, it was clearly was not the work of poachers. There is not much in the wild that can kill a rhino. So the rangers set up some hidden cameras throughout the park and started investigating. The corporate turned out to be a young gang of bull elephants. A bull elephant is a young elephant. And by the way, Elephants, uh, uh, it's a male elephant, thank you. It's a male elephant. A bull elephant is a male elephant. Let me go on. The corporate turned out to be a gang of young bull elephants. The young males were caught on camera chasing down the rhinos, knocking them over and stomping on them. <laughs> elephants. The young males were caught on camera okay, and stomping on them and goring them to death with their tusks. The juvenile elephants <laughs> were terrorizing other animals in the park as well. Such behavior, listen closely, was very rare or very uncommon in young elephants. Why was this teenage elephants acting like this? That was a question of these people. Because it's not normal for elephants. As it turns out, here's what happened. Nearly 10 years earlier, rangers took this group of young bull elephants from an overcrowded situation in another park, and they transported them to another South African park. At the time, the rangers did not have the ability to transport large elephants, as a result, this herd of newly orphaned elephants, they were left without a father, grew up in this new environment without adult role models. I think everyone needs a role model. And these elephants that left the herd had no role model, that were left in the herd had no role model and had no idea what appropriate elephant behavior was reflected okay years after arriving at the park these newly bull elephants developed into troubled teenagers this that is when we when the killing of the um, rhinos started as the Rangers studied the elephants, a pattern began to emerge. The elephants picking on the rhinos were suffering from an excess of testosterone. This is normal in elephants. Check this out. The solution turned out to be the biggest big brother program in the world. The rangers began identifying adult male models for the youngsters. Eventually, they introduced six mature male elephants into the herd. The older bulls quickly established a new hierarchy and let the teenagers know that, there was be that their behavior was not elephant-like. <laughs> in, sh in a short time, the rangers elephants were followed. In a short time, the younger elephants were following the older ones, more dominant bulls around while learning how to be elephants. That meant that the testosterone levels of these young bulls came down. They measured all this stuff. That was good news for the rhinos. Because since the big bulls had arrived, not one rhino had been 
The story about young bull elephants in South Africa shares many parallels with our at-risk youth in our very own cities. In many urban neighborhoods across America, it is not uncommon to have over 75% of youth grow up without a father or a positive role model in their lives. The result has been equally disastrous as it was in these wild parks. Dropping out of high school, violence, drugs, crime. Just like the young elephant, young people need mentors. And just like this park, African park, where there's, where things did not, in, where things did not improve until there was some outside intervention. Our fragile neighborhoods will not turn around until mature mentors walk alongside our at-risk youth and show them another way. Thank you for your prayers and your support. That's pretty interesting, huh? And that's what we're doing as men. All we got to do is influence a few. Not everybody. The sad news is not everybody's going to make it. That's the sad news. Because there's no easy solution. You know, I'm just grateful I made it. Who's grateful you made it? Man, I'm grateful I made it. See, I don't understand why life is the way it is. I don't. I don't. I've been seeking, seeking for answers for years. I don't have all the answers. But I'm finding them. Here's one thing for sure. I need to keep on moving forward. All right? Does anybody have anything here? Let me close. Any questions? Yes. Or any comment? Can I add that it's never too late to be involved as a father in your children's life, even as an older adult? And it's also uh, because you can mend relationships with your children. And um, like when my husband was in, in prison, then you know my kids had to grow up without their father for a few years. Um, you know, they had to reference off of other men, uh, the pastor, you know, the image of an, a man and their life was lacking. But eventually my children, my husband came home and my children mended that relationship with their father. So I don't think it's ever too late, even if, as adult children, for you to, or as a man, to mend the relationship with your children because you can always move forward from there. Yeah. It is, in that documentary I saw, it was just amazing to hear, uh, especially the ladies, because they got more emotional, right? The, the deep hurt that they felt, right? Not having a father. I didn't understand all this stuff. I, I mean, I still don't understand it all. Rejection. I don't understand what that means. I, I don't understand that. And, and whether it's real or not, the, if you're feeling it, you're feeling it, right? And that's why it's so hard for us adults to communicate with our younger uh, kids. It, it's hard because we think very differently, right? You know, we no longer want to think like kids. We know we, you know, we have. There's a certain way to do things, and kids don't understand that or believe that. But the hurt and the pain that that that, that is caused because of fatherlessness is is man. It's and then what we go, what what do we do? We grow up as men and become hard, right? And just block it all out. And again, I always go back to that's why we need God, because the only that's the only thing that will break us. Um, you know, brother, right now I was hearing you about talking about those elephants, you know, where where they were full of testosterone, they didn't know what they were doing. It's the same thing when they threw us into the prison system. You know what I mean? Yep. We're youngsters. We go in there. I, I mean, at least for myself, I'm talking about myself as a youngster. I went in there full of testosterone. I, I was out there doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Fighting, you know, doing the, doing what you got to do to survive in there. You know what I mean? And then once you get out, then, then, then 
you know, it's hard to cope with society because now you're already, your mind is already twisted. trained, twisted more. Yeah, more <laughs> than what it already was, you know, when you come out. So, you know, that's why I, you know, I thank you, brother, for what you're teaching in this class, you know, and, 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 and like sister said, you know, uh, it's never too late, you know, for us to mend our relationship with our children, you know. Because that's what you started doing, right? Yes, sir. That's what I started doing. Um, so, and ever since then, you know, it's been two years since, since I started coming to the church and, and, and doing what I had to do as a, as a father, you know, to, to, to step up as to be a man and, uh, it's helped a lot. You know what I mean? So I can see the difference a lot in my, in my son, you know, uh, before he was on medication, you know, stuff like that. So we kind of took him off of that medication and, uh, and now he can, you know, understand what's really going on, you know, and, and I talked to him about a lot of things, you know. Um, and, and like you said, it's a struggle, but you know, we got to maintain and fight the good fight, you know? Yep. Yeah. Anybody else want to share something? Go ahead. I just want to add to what Isabel said about, um, it's never too late in my experience. My father stepped out for 12 years out of my life and wow. there, were, there were 12 destructive years in my life. And when he came back into my life, I felt like that's when I started to heal. Um, not necessarily because he was back in my life, but it is never too late to start a relationship with your father, and it does make all the difference. Let me ask you a question. Do you think, like in this documentary I saw, do you think having your father would have made a difference? I think it would have made a difference, yes. I would have had more direction. Hmm. Anybody have a question online? Well, that that always takes me back that, that that there's to the fact that I the fact number four that there's no easy solution. You know, I've seen some twisted situations. I'm talking about twisted relationships, twisted abuse, sexual abuse, um, uh, drugs, alcohol, just just some twisted situations. Step fathers, fathers, sisters, brothers, and just twist it. Who, who's, who's seen that? Some of you are saying, like, that was me. <laughs> and, and so, uh, Sherry, is that Sherry, right? So, Sherry, you, you have to, uh, one of the things I'm going to share, maybe this will help you, Sherry, is that now you as a man are going to have to make these decisions, right? And you know, I think about mothers that uh, Sherry, she's a she's a mother. She's a single mother. So she's no doubt gone through a lot in her life. You know, like maybe uh, Jesse over here. So it's even harder for the woman because she's not designed to take all this hurt and pain upon herself. So, man, it's even it gets really twisted. So, Sherry, what I can do, what I can tell you is that you have to decide where I can't. I don't know your situation. I don't know your mindset. I don't know where you're at with God. I don't know where you're at. So you have to find the mentor or the pastor or somebody to guide you in that direction. And sometimes even when we get direction, it there's no guarantee. Which brings me back to God. <laughs> That's why we need God. That's why we need faith. Let me tell you why you're going to need faith. Because things are not going to go your way. Things are going to happen. Death is going to come. Heartache is going to come. Frustration is going to come. Disease is going to come. The storm is going to come. And I love that song that says, Sooner or later... <laughs> The time is going to come. I say the time and the place will come where you're going to need God. And you're going to need to trust Him. Even in the storm. So I hope I helped you, uh, Sherry. Yes, sir. Um, man, I appreciate the interaction, guys. I really do. This helps a lot of people, believe it or not. And Orlando is the thank you for everything that you do um you know i didn't have my father in my life and i've always had questions and i, I wanted answers mm -hmm. and i've never had them 
And so like you had said, you put up a wall and that's what I did. And ultimately it, it, um, it made me to become the person that I, I didn't think that I was gonna become or the person that I didn't even imagine to become. And just recently, a few days ago, my, my sister from my father's side got a hold of me. And the last time we've seen each other was at my father's funeral, probably about 50 some years, 30 some years ago, or, you know, I really don't remember. Your sister, 30 yeah. years ago? Wow. 30, yeah, 30 some years ago. And all these questions that I had towards my father were answered wow. by her wanting to explain to me her side of the story of her lifestyle with my brothers, with my father, with the her mother, with, you know, with everything they went through and what they had to go through. And at one point, Lamar, you <laughs> got orchestrated and you told me Lamar is coming to, ch to serious men. And if you could, you know, talk to him and stuff like that. Sure enough, he came out to be my brother. You know, and at one point, wow. Lamar told me, he goes, he goes, I, I, I'm jealous of you that you didn't get to meet our father. And I kind of didn't understand that, right? And he didn't tell me too much. But then with my sister, what she told me and everything, I understood why she said what she said or he said what he said, you know, and it just opened my mind of all these questions that I had were answered just in the lifestyle that she told me everything that was happening, everything that she went through. And March 1st, 2013, I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart and he started changing my life little by little, one step at a time, my character, everything. And and I took the steps, decisions, I took, you know, all these choices and, and met you know, came across you, choose to change everything. Now I'm here. And so just yesterday, you know, this was two days ago where she told me everything. So I was having a hard time pondering everything that was being said. But then God said, this is what I saved you from. This is why your mom would tell you, stay away from your dad's side because it's wow. not good. And me, like, you know, why? I want my father. I want him there. I didn't understand growing up. And I just took it how it was. Okay, he's not there, so be it. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever. But then later on, I wanted answers. And I didn't know who to go to. But now that I have these answers, now I know that God said, this is a generational curse that you are going to break. Because mm -hmm. no one's going to do it for in you. In other words, there's good news in the bad there news. There is good news. It's bitter, but it's sweet at the end. Because wow. now I look back at my life. Now I see my kids. I, I see my daughter. I see my, you know, my wife. I... I understand that there's a purpose, there's a plan for all of us. It doesn't matter of your past. It doesn't matter the generation after generation. I made the count and there's 10 generations that, or, or 10 generations within the family that have been destroyed by the decisions my father made. Wow. And I was going to be part of that, but I broke that chain. Wow, that's huge. And now I believe that God is calling me for, for my brothers and my sister to reach out to them, you know, because she used to come to the church. And I had no idea back in Business 83 and, well, you know, I did what I had to say, but I thank you, you know. Oh, thank you, brother. So another thing I wanted to ask you was, um, so Choose the Change helped you, but has the structure of the church helped you? It has. Um, one thing you said is that Choose the Change is a backdoor to the church. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay. But at the same time, Choose the Change really challenged me you know, and how you're being challenged. And then when you're telling me your background and how you've been challenged by God and where it comes from the church and so many years and everything that you've been through, I see the person you are today. I want what you want, not in a bad way, but I want it for my family and everything. Yeah. So back to the question of, I have seen the structure of the church helped me because that also discipleship that's a whole other, you know, level yep. apart from what you teach. That's right. I, and it's like the same. But what I'm trying to say is that it goes in hand in hand. Our life counts and it needs to be challenged. And if no one's going to challenge us, then we're never going to step up. We're never going to move forward. We're never going to see forward for our family, for our kids. We want what's best for our kids, for our family. But it has to be us that has to make that decision. 
you are male or female, you make that decision. No one's gonna make it for you. Mm -hmm. And if they are, then it might be not good. And in my case, prison, you know, you're gonna make decisions for us. But overall, it's allow yourself to be challenged, male or female, but allow yourself to be challenged and see what God has in store for you. And that's something that I learned, you know, yeah. Am I there you know, yet? No. Zapata is a perfect example of how I started the Choose the Change organization because I want I knew that I couldn't lead you myself. That in fact we need help, all of us. We need help. Not only do we need help, we need structure. And this is what the church brings. It brings a structure to you. You know, not only do you we have God involved. Because this program without God is not it, this it's, it's nothing. I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> I knew that I wanted God in the center of this. Because that's the only one that's going to keep it together. And what I mean by that is all that stuff that you have inside. All that stuff that you don't tell nobody. All that stuff that hurt, the pain, the frustration. Okay, that's where you need God. And then you need friends and relationships. You need a pastor. You need your wife. We need your kids. We need friends. So this is why this process, right? This whole process, it, it's, a, it's a fertile ground to grow, right? And that's what we're here for. It's a choice. And that's why I, tell, and that's why I say you have to keep believing in the impossible. <laughs> Because sitting in here, sitting in here, um, I, ch ch sitting in here are people that were forced to believe in the impossible. I just want to share that growing up, I had my dad, so I don't know what rejection is. Wow. So I had my dad. My dad was everything to me. He, everything. He was always there, but he died when I was eighteen. Mm. And. When I lost my dad, I, I fell apart. Wow. I had my dad, so I never wanted to disappoint him. So I never drank or smoked until he died. It was like, it didn't matter no more because he wasn't there. Mm. He, I didn't have, I didn't have to, he wasn't gonna see my shame, my brokenness until I came to church. And when I found God and I gave my salvation, I, I gave my life to God then God filled all that again. Like I didn't have my dad, but now I have God to do. So now I can't go back because God was like, took my father's place. That's maybe? right. So I don't understand rejection, but I do understand how good God is because he was able to fill me and I mm. no longer had to I couldn't do what I was doing when my dad passed away because now God was watching me. Yeah. My dad was watching me and my dad no longer there, but now God was there. So Amen. the so, church is. Oh, it's definitely. So let me add something to that because this is powerful. The Bible says that God, the father, is a father to who? To the fatherless. And check this out. This is what uh, I got this revelation uh, through a sermon. And I, I knew there's scriptures where Jesus is always telling the disciples, he's telling the people, especially in John, he's, he says, I know you, Father, but I want them to know you. They need to know you. Jesus came to introduce us to the Father. Isn't that powerful? Jesus Christ came to, to introduce us to our Father. So even though you didn't have a Father, you have a father to turn to. That's powerful stuff. Some, it's called a mystery, according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I hope this helped you guys. Thank you for watching online. Don't forget, every Thursday, 7 p.m. on our Facebook page, you like us on YouTube, Choose the Change Foundation. That's all we have tonight. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Awesome.